Hey everybody, welcome back to Organic Chemistry. My name is Todd Rothman, and in this section, section 6 of the amine chapter, we're going to go over diazonium reactions. Now this is the last section for the chapter, and we'll be wrapping up after this with some last problems, and that'll cover the chapter of amines. Now, but before we get to this, uh, the core of these problems, we have to learn a little bit about what's called diazonium groups. Now, Let's actually get started. Let's just go right into this. And, and so you can see, by the way, the topics here. We have the introduction that we're going to do now. And then we're going to get into this arene diazonium reaction, which really is a lot of work because it brings back all of the aromatic stuff that we learned about uh, earlier this semester. So this really gets a little bit complicated, not because of the new material, but because we really do have to refresh our memory on all the old uh, talking points back then. Okay? so. All right, so that's it. Let's get started. So the first thing I want to talk about is what is this whole idea of a nitroso group? Now, if you take, let's say, um, NaNO2. So if you have sodium nitrate, NaNO2, uh, and again, this is called sodium nitrate, okay? So with sodium nitrate, sorry, sodium nitrite, sodium nitrite, with sodium nitrite, what happens here is by adding acid like HCl, we're going to wind up turning this into NO2H, which is called nitrous acid, right? So all we're doing is if we have an N and it's double bond O and O minus, then what's going to happen is we have a sodium next to it because that oxygen is negative. By using hydrochloric acid, we're simply making it like that, which is protonating. So it's N, it's HNO2 instead of NaNO2. So we just protonated the, one of the oxygens with the hydrochloric acid. Okay, so this is nitrous acid, nitrous acid. Okay, and you'll see why I'm writing this out like carefully because um, do you remember HNO3? So now we have HNO2. Whoop, HNO2. We have HNO3. So it kind of gets confusing if you're not careful about recognizing this and we'll get to that soon enough but from nitrous acid what we can do is just add another HCl so it's already in this environment and now we get this nitroso group what happens is the oxygen right here winds up getting protonated and leaving and we wind up getting an N double bond O that's positive this is a nitroso group nitroso is important plus water right we don't care about the water so I'll ignore that but this OH leaves as water. Now, here's the thing. So we have sodium nitrate, NaNO2, nitrous acid, that becomes a nitroso group. Now, it turns out that anywhere along this chain of events here, either this place or that place, we can begin because you need the same exact requirement. So sometimes you'll see on a, on a question, they'll write NaNO2 with HCl. Other times they'll write HNO2 with HCl, and they really mean the same thing, right? This is HNO2. So you could have HNO2 with HCl or NaNO2 with HCl, and they get you to the same point. So that's the first thing to keep in mind. Now also remember that nitrous acid is not the same as nitric acid, right? So let's kind of get that down now. HNO2, HNO3 are not the same, right? This is nitrous this is nitric acid. And we learned about nitric acid back in the aromatic chapter, right? We were talking about how we could use that to bring an NO2 into a, a benzene, right? So we're going to come back to that very soon. But I want you to see this now because this is a very common uh, confusion. People use this and this as the same thing, and they're not. We're going to learn that this does something very different, okay? All right. So now, Basically, what we've done so far is just I gave you an idea of how to make what's called a nitroso group. Now, nitroso groups are important because they're the precursor to diazonium groups, okay? But how we do that is actually under very specific conditions. So the first thing I want to talk about is what happens if we were to treat a tertiary amine. Let's say we have a tertiary amine, and we were to react it with... So here's our tertiary amine, and we were to react it with HNO2 with HCl. 
So what's going to happen, see, we're starting here, right here, HNO2. So we're starting at the nitrous acid, but I could have wrote NaNO2 either uh, as well, right? So HNO2 or, so NaNO2 or HNO2, right? So what's going to happen is we get this nitroso group in situ, in the environment, we're making nitroso, which then reacts with an amine. So the first thing is we're going to get N double bond O plus, right? And then that can be reacted with this amine, where the nitrogen here is going to come into the nitrogen there. And so now we wind up getting a nitroso amine. This is called a nitroso amine. So an N nitroso amine, if you want to name it. So this is a nitroso group. So if you have an ethyl and, or like let's say a triethyl amine, so you could have an N nitroso triethyl amine or trimethyl amine, right? Okay. Now that's it. That's really all that would happen here. There's no further reaction. See, because nothing can happen like I'm going to show you soon. You're going to see the difference, but you still have to know what it looks like when a tertiary amine reacts. And really you get this. That's it. There's nothing more to say about this one. Okay, so another thing, you, oh, you could, this is positive, by the way, right? The nitrogen's got four bonds around it. So the other thing that we could do is we can treat it with a tertiary aniline. What if we have a tertiary aniline? Now, again, we're not going to get very far with this. So when you have a tertiary aniline, let's say we have an NN dimethyl aniline, right? So N comma N dimethyl aniline. Well, if we treat this aniline, remember, aniline is a nitrogen on a benzene. Well, with either HNO2 or NaNO2, doesn't matter, right? Same thing in HCl. Well, it turns out that you'll wind up getting an NO2 in the para, I'm sorry, NO, nitroso, in the para or ortho position. So what this does is it brings in to the ortho or para position. So you get that or that right there, a nitroso on the benzene. So you get both of these, right? Because remember, this is an ortho para director. Aniline is an ortho para director. It's got an atom with lone pair touching benzene. So if we have this, we can bring the nitro rather than on nitrogen because that would make it positive and deactivated, and then it would mess with the benzene. It would deactivate it. Instead, we put it on the nitro. See, this is a, be a deactivating group as well for benzene, but now benzene has this one to counter it. So it turns out that you don't bring it on the nitrogen. You bring it onto the benzene. Okay? So this is a... What, what's that? Oh, I see. And... Okay, so this is right there, and these are things that happen with tertiary amines. You, there's not much to say. You just have to kind of know this um, in case it ever came up as a multiple choice. It's very unlikely that it would, but you still have to kind of learn what happens. There's not much more about it. So with the tertiary amine, and the same as we'll see with a secondary, we just go one step further. But with a tertiary amine, we make this right here, and that's really all we can do. Now, if we do a secondary amine, it's really the same thing. We don't get very far. So let's say we have a, a dimethyl amine and we use HNO2 with HCl or NaNO2 with HCl, right? So at this point, we're going to get an NaNO and it's going to, it's an NO, right? An N double bond O. And this is positive. The only difference is that we can actually stabilize with water we, or whatever base we can stabilize the nitrogen. And that's really it. That's what happens here, and that's the extent of this. So we have, a, again, a nitroso amine that we form, but nothing else can happen. So with a secondary amine or a tertiary amine, we make nitroso amine. So for secondary and tertiary amines, we make nitroso amines. Nothing more to say about this. Nitroso, by the way, amines are carcinogenic, so they've been removed from our diet. Uh, so this used to be a preservative that we would use to preserve food, but it's no longer being used that way because it's, it causes cancer. Um, but other than you know some biological activity that I just referred to, there's not much else to say about this. Okay, So we learn it just for completeness. The real magic comes in here. This is where the magic begins. So here's... Here is where the magic 
begins, if you want to call it that. It's just that we have reactions.